Okay. So for today, kita nak continue after you already understand on how to find those uh, measure of location for ungroup data, we may proceed with the next part, box and whiskers plot. Okay. So for box and whiskers plot, we have fixed step. This is the step. Kita terus pergi je lah kepada soalan nanti. Okay. And then after we construct that box plot, we may uh, interpret or comment about the distribution of our data. Okay. Based on, the, uh, based on our box plot, we have three types of distribution. First one, if it's like this, daripada box plot tu kita lukis nanti kita boleh tarik distribution exactly symmetrical. So we can comment or interpret the data as symmetrical skewed or normal distribution. Okay. Macam mana nak dapat tu nanti? Bila kita construct baru kita nampak lah. Okay. That's the first comment. Second comment. If our whiskers or our data, they lebih uh, cenderung skewed to the right side, then our comment would be positively skewed or skewed to the right lah. And last one, if our data uh, skewed to the left side, dia lagi cenderung, lagi panjang ke arah kiri, then we can comment it as negatively skewed or skewed to the left. Okay. So now we will uh, go summary of the shape on how to construct the box plot. Okay, yang tengah-tengah tu box plot, itu kotak tu. Itu yang kita namakan sebagai box plot. From the box plot, we must, uh, we must have three values, Q1, Q2, Q3. And then we must have upper fence and lower fence, maximum and minimum value. After that, outlier if exists, baru kita boleh nampak distribution. Okay, yang ni tak payah hafal lah. Kita faham konsep nak construct. Baru kita boleh komen. Okay. Uh, not to worry. Topik 6 takkan masuk dalam final exam. Uh, itu senang dia. Dia tak boleh masuk. Tapi itulah kan sebab topik ni senang. Uh, dia tak masuk dalam final exam. Okay. So from the following. Construct the box and whisker for the following data. Dalam soalan memang akan clearly oh, clearly mention about box and whisker spot. So awak takkan confuse lah nak buat apa, nak buat apa. Ha, itu memang soalan akan fokus kepada box and whiskers plot. Okay, step number one. Make sure your data must be arranged in ascending order. Ha, itu benda awak mesti check dulu. So kalau dia belum tersusun, then awak kena susun lah sendiri. Kalau dia dah tersusun macam soalan ni, ha, kita dah senang. So itu step number one eh. Remember, make sure your data is arranged in ascending order. Ascending eh, bukan descending. Susunan menaik. Okay. Settle with that. Moving on to step number two ataupun step seterusnya. We must find the quartiles. All quartiles. Q1, Q2 and Q3. Okay. Nak cari tiga benda ni ada dalam video 6.2 part 1 yang saya dah upload. Kalau siapa yang tak ingat lah. Okay. We start with the first one eh, Q1. What is Q1? It must be quarter of our data. So 1 over 4 times with data. Data tu apa? Number of our data. Bilangan data kita. Jangan pergi tambahkan semua data tu tau. Dia bilangan data. Number of our data. In this case soalan ni kalau kira satu-satu, number of our data would be 12. Ada 12 data semua sekali. So quarter times 12. Okay. So, apa yang kita dapat kat sini, kita akan dapat 3. Okay. Itu bukan jawapan kita. 3 is basically our observation. So, since this is integer, kita tak boleh terus ambil third observation. We must choose third observation plus with fourth observation divided by 2. Itu memang formula eh, for integer. Bila kita dapat jawapan nombor, terus dia third plus fourth observation divided by 2. Okay. So, our answer now, based on our list, choose the third data, in this case, 20, plus fourth data, 22, divided by 2. So, 20 plus 22 divided by 2, we get 21. That would be our Q1. Okay. So, kalau awak belah-belah data daripada list tu, sebenarnya Q1 dia duduk kat tengah-tengah ni. Arrow saya buat tu, tengah. Sebab tu kita kena third data plus fourth data divided by 2. Okay. Next one, Q2. Q2 be median means half of our data. So half times 12, you should get 6. Sama juga because this is integer. So 6 observation 
plus with the next observation, 7 observation, divided by 2. Saya tulislah tertinggal pula. OBSV tu maksudnya observation. Bilangan data. Data yang keberapa. Okay. So means now for our Q2, it would be 6 observation. Data yang ke-6 is 24. Plus 7 observation. Data yang ke-7. Divided by 2. So 26 plus 24 divided by 2, you should get 25. Okay. That's for Q2. Moving on. Last one, Q3. So for Q3, it will be third quarter. Three quarter of our data. So three over four times 12. In this case, we will get nine. Sama cerita tadi. Sebab dia integer. So nine observation plus the next observation. So 10 observation divided by 2 means now our Q3 would be data yang ke-9. So data yang ke-9 kat sini is 28 plus 30 divided by 2. Our answer should be 29. Alright. Uh, kenapa kalau kita belah-belah tu tempat saya buat arrow tu lah Kedudukan dia sebenarnya Q1 duduk kat tengah-tengah Sebab tu kena tambah bagi dua Q2 pun sama Q3 pun sama Dia duduk kat tengah-tengah Sebab tu kita ambil data bahagi dua Dapatlah Q1, Q2 and Q3 Okay Settle for quartiles All the quartiles Ini tiga-tiga mesti betul dulu Kalau sini mengarut habis dah terus Bawah tu semua awak akan salah Okay Settle with the first step. Moving on, next step, step number two. We must find the fence. Okay, pagar. Fence, we have two different types of fence. First one will be upper fence. For upper fence, we have a fixed formula which is Q3 plus with 1.5 times with IQR, interquartile range. What is interquartile range? Q3 minus Q1. Alright, so based on our answer before, I just directly substitute our value now. So upper fence should be 29 plus with 1.5 times with 29 minus 21. Then just compute this into your calculator. Your answer should be 41. Okay, settle with upper fence. Now moving on to next one, lower fence. Okay, so for lower fence, our formula once again fixed tapi sekarang Q1 pula. Minus with 1.5 times with interquartile range. Ada beza sikit bahagian depan tu. Kalau upper Q3 plus 1.5. Kalau lower Q1 minus 1.5 times with interquartile range. Alright, so the substitute just now Q1 is 21. So 21 minus with 1.5 times with 29 minus 21. In this case, our answer should be 9. Alright, done. So settle first two steps. So step yang awal kita memang kena carilah all these five things. Q1, Q2, Q3, upper fence and lower fence. Okay, the step forward je lah sebenarnya kan. Okay. Alright, now we moving on to the next step. We may start construct our box plot. Kita dah boleh start lukis box plot kita. Okay, saya tarik ke tepi sini lah. Okay, so for box plot, first one, we must have a proper Range uh, for our number line Dia bermula dengan number line Number line tu mesti ada proper scale Macam mana nak dapatkan scale Awak sendiri kena adjust from your data Data kita berubah-ubah Sekejap saya patah balik pergi atas Contoh kat sini data kita uh, Smallest one is 5 Yang paling tinggi kat situ is 45 So gap dia tu kalau kita nampak tak berapa jauh Saya bolehlah guna range kita 5 So, saya guna gap 555 eh. Tapi kalau data kita very large, contoh lah bermula at 5. Uh, largest data kita 100 something. So, awak pergilah pakai gap 10. Macam tu. Pandai-pandai adjust sendiri. So, that dia takkan kacau sangat shape of our distribution nanti. Okay. So, saya start dengan number line. Uh, awak pakailah pembaris saya. Number line saya sengit. Saya ingat ke situ. Sorry. Okay. So, tadi saya kata nak mula dengan uh, smallest one is 0 kan. Saya mula dengan 0 lah. 5. 10, 15, 
Okay. Cukup kat situ. Saya berhentilah kat 50 sebab largest data kita tadi 45. Okay. So now kita dah boleh construct the box plot. That's the first thing. So box plot mesti dalam bentuk kotak. Jangan ubah shape. Is basically combination of Q1, Q2 and Q3. So Q1 just now is 21. So agak-agak lah 21 from your number line tu kat mana. Saya label situ. Itu Q1 saya. Okay. And then Q2 is 25. Last one Q3 is 29. Okay. So gabung kat. Alright, so Q1, Q2, Q3. Okay, itu yang kita namakan dia sebagai box plot. Alright, next part, label your fence. Pagar kita tadi, apa yang awak dah cari, we have two different types of fence, upper fence and lower fence. So for fence, kita akan guna straight dotted line, garis putus-putus untuk pagar. Okay, so for lower fence just now is 9. So saya buatlah uh, dia agak-agak je cukup sketching. Kalau kita nak proper betul kena guna graph paper kan. Uh, tak boleh lah kat sini kita agak-agak je sketching. So lower fence is at 9 and then upper fence is at 41. Okay, so now we have upper fence. Alright. Settle. Okay. Once we settle with the fence, now we may find the maximum and minimum value from our data. But then we have a condition here. Maximum and minimum value must lies inside the fence. So maksudnya dia mesti duduk kat dalam kawasan yang berpagar tu. Dia tak boleh duduk luar pagar. Okay. Apa maksud saya kat sini? Okay. Kita patah balik tengok data eh. Okay. So data kita sekarang ni yang ni. Alright. So for minimum, for sure we must choose the smallest value, smallest data. So in this case, smallest data is 5. Tapi pagar kita tadi kat 9 kan? So maksudnya 5 already lies outside of our fence. So dia tak boleh jadi uh, minimum. Okay, if this happen, kita kena pilih the next data. Okay, so the next data would be 10. So 10 ni duduk dalam pagar. So automatic dia yang akan jadi minimum. Okay. So same goes to maximum. Alright. Goes to the largest data first. In this case it's 45. But then once again it lies outside of the fence. Sebab fence kita tadi kat 41. So dia dah duduk luar pagar. So kita reject that one. That cannot be the maximum one. Okay. Then choose the next data lah. Data sebelum dia. So sebelum dia it's 40. Okay. So dia lies inside the fence. So automatic 40 would be our maximum data. Maximum value. Okay. So kita patah balik eh. Okay ingat. Minimum should be 10. Maximum should be 40. Okay. So kita buat ini. Biasanya untuk minimum and maximum dia dot je. Satu bulat. Okay. And then kita tarik pergi ke box plot. So that would be minimum. And then maximum just now is 40. Alright. And that would be maximum. Okay. Macam tu. And then kita ada two data yang kita dah reject tadi kan. The minimum one, the smallest data, 5. And then the largest one uh, would be 45. Okay. Those two would be outlier. Sebab dia dah duduk luar daripada pagar. So kita ada two outlier. Outlier kita akan guna simbol star. Okay. So itu outlier. First one at 5. And then second one would be at 45. Okay. Settle. So this is the basic uh, step on how to construct box plot. Okay. Mesti ada semua benda ni. Dia akan check satu-satulah. So start remember with a proper number line. Mesti ada number line kat situ. And then awak lukis awak punya box plot. Q1, Q2, Q3. Okay. And then label your fence, upper fence and lower fence. And then choose your maximum and minimum value. Make sure it lies inside the fence. Tak boleh duduk luar pagar. Kalau awak duduk luar pagar, awak langgar pagar tu. Pagar tu roboh lah. Tak boleh. Ha. Ingat bila nak lukis tu, minimum dengan maximum tak boleh langgar pagar. Tak boleh bersilang pun dengan pagar tu. Okay. And then if we have data outside of the fence, we consider that as outlier. So outlier... 
not necessarily happen for all box plot. Kalau ada, adalah. Kalau tak ada, tak adalah. Ha, dia tak semestinya ada outlier. But then all the other things mesti ada. Q1, Q2, Q3, fans and maximum minimum. Itu mesti ada. Outlier je bergantung. Kalau ada yang terduduk luar pagar baru outlier exist. Okay. Settle. Okay. So kenapa namakan box plot tadi? Okay. Yang kotak tu box plot. Yang garis yang kita tarik pergi maximum and minimum tu yang kita namakan dia sebagai whiskers. Saya tarik eh. Haa uh, ni. Whisker. Apa yang awak tarik ke bagi misai tu. So sebab tu nama dia box and whiskers plot. Okay. Yang garisan panjang tu whisker. Yang kotak-kotak tengah tu box plot. Okay. So from here how do we interpret our data? Okay. Macam mana kita nak so okay. Sketch the distribution. Okay. Kalau soalan minta sketch the distribution. Kita nak lukis bukit kita tadi tu. Okay. Remember. Peak of our distribution, puncak dia mesti duduk kat Q2, tengah-tengah. Okay. And then kita akan turun ke sikit distribution tu tarik pergi minimum. And then yang ni tarik pergi maximum. Okay. So in this case, kalau saya tarik tu awak nampak distance dia sama kan. Q2 pergi minimum dengan Q2 pergi maximum, same distance. 15 je gap dia kat situ. The same direction, jarak je. Oh kira lah awak nampak kat situ. Q2 tu 25. Pergi minimum kita 10. So dia punya gap tu 15 kat sini. Q2 pergi maximum, gap dia pun 15. Same direction. Sama je jarak dia. From here macam mana nak comment, kita akan cakap dia jarak yang sama. So this is symmetrical distribution. Okay. So, symmetrical distribution ni kalau soalan suruh interpret ataupun soalan suruh comment on our box plot. So, itu je comment kita. Symmetrical distribution ataupun normal distribution. Ha, jangan pergi comment benda-benda mengarut lagi. Tiba nak pergi comment maximum lah, fans lah. Ha, tak ada eh. Ha, comment kita pasal distribution je. Symmetrical distribution. Yang bukit atas ni kita gunakan sebab kita nak dapatkan symmetrical distribution tu lah. Alright. Okay, ini kita akan guna kalau soalan tu sketch. Sketch the distribution. Nah, awak lukislah bukit tu. Okay. Ini tak ada dalam soalan tadi. Saya yang tambah. Soalan suruh construct box plot je. So, saya tambah dua part lah. If the question ask to sketch the distribution based on the box plot, that would be the distribution bukit tu. And if the question ask to interpret or comment on the box plot, then in this case it will be symmetrical distribution because distance between the peak, median to the maximum and minimum point are the same. Okay, settle with the box plot. Okay, panjang cerita kita eh? sampai 20 minit baru buat satu box plot je. Okay, uh, ni soalan favorite lah. Mana tahu keluar kat dalam group assignment kan? UPS ke? Okay. Settle. Kita cuba lagi satu soalan. Okay. So, this question. Gambar data kat tepi tu jangan pelik. Ada dalam video 6.1. I already introduced. This is basically stem and leaf diagram. Depan ni kita namakan sebagai stem. Belakang kita namakan dia sebagai leaf. Alright. So, the following stem and leaf diagram for sample of high in centimeter of a type of herbal plants. All observation are integers. Maksudnya kat sini dia bukan perpuluhan. So you have to know how to read the data. Let's say I choose the first data. Recap balik je untuk orang yang dah lupa. Itu 1, 3, 0 tu maksudnya 13 dash 0 sama lah maksud dengan 130 cm. Macam tu. Okay. Alright. So now first part we have to calculate the mean. So what is mean? Mean is the average on how to find and how to find this is summation of all data divided by its number of data. Hasil tambah semua data bahagikan dengan bilangan data. So semua data tu tambahlah satu-satu. Kita ada 130 plus 136, 145. Ha, tambah semua sekali bahagikan dengan bilangan data. Data tu kalau kira satu-satu, all together we have 17 data. Saya tak bagi kat sini, saya bagi jawapan jawab kira sendiri eh. 161.88. Sebab senang sangat kan? Bosan je jalan kerja dia. Tambah semua data, bahagi bilangan data. Oh, bilangan data kita supposed to be 17. Okay. 
Next one, find median first quartile and third quartile. Okay, soalan ni sebenarnya dia nak membantu pergi ke part C, construct the box and whiskers plot. So, we have to find Q1, Q2, Q3. Okay, so following same step as before. First one, we have to find median. Nama lain median, Q2. Okay. Alright. So, Remember, if it's median or Q2, half of our data. So, half times with 17. So, kat sini awak akan dapat 8.5. So, remember, ini belum lagi jawapan. Ini baru observation. But then, logik tak kita nak cari observation yang ke 8.5. Tang mana nak cari kan? So, since this is non-integer, nombor ni bukan integer, remember, if this happen, we have to go to the next integer. So, if it's 8.5, we go to the next one. So, we have to choose the 9 observation. Cari data yang ke 9. Okay. So, from the list just now, uh, carilah kira data yang ke 9. So, kita akan ada 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, our ni yang 8 saya bulat tu. Cara nak baca, dia mesti start from stem pergi ke leaf. So, it's 15 stroke 8. Maksudnya 158. So that would be our Q2. So Q2 is 158 cm. Okay. And then we have to find first and third quartile. So Q1 and Q3. So remember Q1 or nama lain dia lower quartile would be quarter of our data. So 1 over 4 times with 17. Oh, 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 oh. Awak pun tekan lah kalkulator tau. Dia nak tinggal saya je. Okay. So quarter of 17 will be 4.25. Sama. Lagi sekali tak logik. Macam mana kita nak cari data yang ke 4.25. Mana nak dapat 0.25 tu? Tak boleh. So you have to round off to the next data. Go to the next integer. In this case it will be fifth observation. Okay, so from the list just now, kita kira data yang kelima. So, kita akan dapat yang atas tu. So, in this case, our Q1 should be 148. Okay, and then last one, we have to find Q3. Oh. So, Q3 would be 3 over 4 times with number of data. So, 17. In this case, we get, uh, sorry, 12.75 observation. Lagi sekali tak boleh. So, you have to round off to the next one. Should be 13 observation. Okay. Kiralah data yang ke-13 daripada list tu. Tadi kita berhenti kat 9 ni. 10, 11, 12, 13. So, 8 yang bawah tu. In this case, our Q3 would be 168 cm. Okay. Settle. Uh, ini kita recap juga bersamalah on how to find the quartile untuk siapa-siapa yang dah lupa. So nak cari quartile kita ada dua jenis eh. Between odd number and even number tu lah awak ada dah dulu belajar sebenarnya. So if it's odd number macam ni observation that you obtain would be in decimal point. Non-integer case. So if it's non-integer what do we do? Go to the next integer. Next integer tau jangan pakai konsep bunda. Ada yang selalu tersalah kat sini dia pakai konsep bunda. So 8.5 dia pergi 9. Okay betul. 4.25 dia pergi ambil 4. Dia pakai round off. Ah, bukan. We have to go to the next integer. Always do that. Okay. So this is for non-integer case. For integer case, refer to the previous example lah kita dah buat tadi. Okay. Settle with all those three. Now proceed to the last one. We have to construct box and whiskers plot and then comment about the data distribution. Okay. Kita pergi seterusnya. Number three. Before start construct the box plot, we have to find the fence first. Fence tadi ada dua. Jangan lupa upper fence and lower fence. Okay. So for upper fence must be Q3 plus 1.5 times width intercontrail range. So 168 minus 148. In this case, our upper fan should be 198. Okay. And then, next one about lower fence. 
So lower front should be Q1. Dia mesti start dengan Q1. Lower kan Q1 lah. Dekat arah Q1. Q1 minus 1.5 times with interquartile range. So in this case our lower fan is 118. Okay, settle. Dah dapat lima benda ni, ingat Q1, Q2, Q3, upper fence and lower fence Then we may start construct the box plot Start with our number line Mesti mula dengan number line dulu Okay, tengok kesesuaian data Data ni bermula dengan 130 Tadi kita ada fence kita 118 kat situ Okay, and then stop at 230 So gap dia besar kan, bridge dia besar So saya buat gap kita 10 lah Tadi gap kita baru 5 je Alamak, saya tarik ke tepi lah. Sekejap, 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 sekejap. Okay. Alright, so our box plot start with a number line. Ha, number line what? Kita tegak-tegak eh. So we have 110, 120 sampai lah 230. Kalau macam ni, janganlah pula pergi buat kerja gila nak muda dengan kosong kan. Oh nak pergi kosong sampai seratus tu tak ada data. Ah, tak payahlah buat nombor lengkap tu bermula kat mana-mana yang ada dekat-dekat dengan data lah. So saya bermula kat 110. Kalau awak pergi mula daripada kosong tiba-tiba panjang sangat nombor lain awak tak cukup kertas pula kau. Okay. Alright settle. So now after that we may start sketching the box plot. Remember Q1, Q2 and Q3. Ha, kita agak-agak je sketching. So tadi Q1 is 148. Saya agak-agak je kat sini. Okay and then Q2 is 158. Q3 is 168. Okay. Combine all the box. Q1, Q2, Q3. And then next label your fence. Upper fence and lower fence. Lower fence is 118. So this is lower fence. Upper fence is 198 just now. Okay. Okay, settle. Settle with those fence. Now we may decide our maximum and minimum value. So ingat syarat. Minimum smallest data inside the fence. Maximum largest data inside the fence. Okay, kita kena pergi balik kat data kita eh. Alright. Oh, oh, oh. Kenapa tak nak gerak? Okay. So, smallest data would be yang ni. And first one ni. So, 130. 130 memang duduk dalam pagar lah kan. So, that would be minimum value. Kita tak perlu reject dia. Okay. And then next one. Largest data kita is 230. So, itu dah duduk luar daripada pagar. Sebab pagar kita kat 198. So, we have to reject that. Choose the next data. In this case, 192. Duduk dalam pagar. So kita ada satu data lah yang kita reject. 230. Okay. Saya patah balik pergi. Box plot. Alright. So our minimum should be 130 just now. No problem for that. Okay. And then maximum should be 192. And then, kita ada data yang kita reject tadi kan, 230. So, what happened 230? It will be the outlier. Mana colour apa nak pakai? Hmm, ni lah. Oh, tak cukup tebal. Oh. Two hundred thirty kita ada satu outlier. Okay, settle. That is our box plot. So now we have to comment about this box plot. So we have to sketch the distribution. Remember when for, uh, it comes to the distribution, peak would be at Q2. And then tarik turun pergi minimum. Tarik turun pergi maximum. Nampak macam lebih kurang, awak kira jarak. Kira eh, tolakkan kat situ. So kat sini awak nampak from Q2 goes to minimum. And then Q2 goes to maximum. Jarak dia tak sama sebenarnya. Kan? Satu tu kita dapat uh, apa tadi? 158 minus 30. So 28. 
158 pergi ke 190 ha, yang tu lebih. So kita lagi panjang ke arah positif ke arah kanan. So our comment in this case would be we have two different comment. Either you want to use it's positively skewed kita punya data lebih cenderung ke arah kanan ke arah positif. Positively skewed or we can comment as skewed to the right. Okay. Settle. Daripada Q2 pergi maksimum minimum tau. Jangan pergi Q3, Q1 tu. Kalau pergi Q3, Q1 jarak kita semua sama tadi. Kalau siapa lupa tengok balik value lah saya tak label ni. Ini tadi kita dapat 148. Sini 158. Ini 168. Kalau nampak kat box plot je jarak dia gap dia sama je tu. Bukan. Ni daripada Q2 pergi maksimum. Maksimum just now. Sorry 192. Minimum is 130. Uh, baru nampak jarak dia tak sama sebenarnya. Dia slightly lah. Slightly positively skewed. Ataupun slightly skewed to the right. Okay. So that's about box plot. Uh, dia konsep dia senang je kan. Dia leceh. Dia leceh tapi tak susah. Hmm, ingat je step. Ingat je nak lukis macam mana. Settle about box plot. Okay.